talk about Bobby. Bobby Ramirez. Bobby was um, uh, Pop Emilio, the person that I got my name from because my dad was very good friends with Emilio Ramirez. So there's a couple of pictures I have of Bobby when he was a baby. Francis said that kid was white as heck. Bobby was a super white kid. You know, even in the pictures, it's like you you see eyes and uh, eyebrows in the mouth. But he's, if he was on, against a white sheet, you you couldn't tell too much. And there's a picture of Bobby in a, one of those old-fashioned um, baby carriages. Those big ones that had the bar over here. And it was like, you know, preambulators. Uh, uh, I think somebody said that somewhere. Um, so there's a picture. In the street outside, Bobby's in the in the baby carriage, and if you look up in the corner up here, my dad's going like this for Bobby to look and stuff, and it's like a little bit of if you couldn't if you didn't know, and if they cropped the picture, my dad would be gone just a little bit, but Dad's there. So I remember, okay, we went to Pop's house when we came from New York the first time when we came to California. And um, I remember Bobby used to show us all kinds of bad things. He he, he made a, a, out of clothespins and rubber bands, some kind of gun to shoot matches. Those wood matches, you know, those long wood matches. Somehow shoot those things. Um, I remember that there was a spider web on the side of the house. This Spider web, big spider web, and there was a spider in there. And Pop's house. And I think we would shoot those matches at the spider. Bobby liked kind of science stuff, so he had a microscope and some other little science things. So he would get me as a little kid to go to the bathroom because there was an ant, an ant line in the bathroom. I don't know why, but there was ants in the bathroom. So he would give me a piece of paper or something. We'll get get an ant and bring it here. So I'd go and get an ant and bring it, and he, we'd look at it under the microscope. One time Danny came. There used to be, I, there may still be, those joke ice that have a, a fly in the middle of it. It's like a plastic, uh, a plastic cube with a fly in the middle so that you put it in somebody's drink and they're drinking and then they go, oh shit, there's a fly in here. I don't know if those were real flies or plastic, make-believe flies, but there was like a, a plastic uh, ice cube with a fly in it. So Danny had one of those and then Bobby looked at it and he had this kind of pointy thing and he was going like that, scratching it, see if he can touch the fly inside. What else, what else, what else? Okay, Bobby was older and stuff. Let me say this one thing. I remember his mom dying, Madrina. She was our godmother. She had a stroke and died. Okay, Bobby was a kid. Bobby was crying like hell. Bobby, for the rest of his life, was traumatized because his mom died when he was young. And I remember we came to the house. We were still young, and he was young. And Bobby's, the first thing we, we come in the house, and Bobby's there crying. You know. And, um... We went to the funeral, and um, I hear a cat around there. We went to the funeral, and then everyone was there, Mom and Dad and Francis and the Pops family and all these people that I knew that were f f uh, friends, because we weren't really uh, family with Pop and no, none of that, but we kind of like then, Bobby, we kind of called him our cousin. He, we weren't really related at all. So we go to Madrina's funeral. Mom faints in the parking lot before we go into the, I don't know if it was to the, at the actual uh, cemetery or before we went into the, the, the funeral home. But in the parking lot, mom poof, falls on the ground. And in me, a little kid, I thought, well, here goes somebody else dying. So we're all standing there like, well, what do we do now? And then, uh, I think it was Jack, um, Rosie. Rosie was one of uh, Pop's daughters. Jack picks Mom up and puts her into a car and stuff. Jack used to like Mom. Dad didn't like that. 
But that's neither here nor there. Um, Francis, I should have asked Francis some more questions about that. I did, but then we didn't record it. So, that was a big traumatic experience for all of us, including Bobby. And the rest of his life, he was looking for his mom, and he was, like, traumatized forever until he died about losing his mom when he was so young. Um, let's see, what else about Bobby? So then Bobby went to Catholic school. And I remember us going when he graduated from Catholic school, and it was a big thing. Everyone was there. Then there was a party at the house. Um, one New Year's, Pop always had parties. My dad had separated himself from Pop and all those other people because my dad didn't drink and wasn't a smoker. Dad smoked a little bit when he was younger, and then he didn't. So my dad wasn't a party person. My dad was a hard-working, go-to-bed-early get up early to go to work. Rock a dime and all those other aerospace places he worked at. So my dad wasn't a partier and not a drinker or nothing like that. You know, so We didn't have booze in the house. There might be a bottle of wine here or there or something. So Pop always had parties. So then one time he invited us. I don't know why this specific time there was a New Year's party. So we made coquito. My mom made coquito in the old-fashioned way where you grind, grade the uh, coconut. You get a real coconut and crack it open and get out the meat and save the water and grade all of the coconut stuff inside and raw eggs. Like nowadays nobody eats raw eggs. I used to like eating raw eggs. So a bunch of raw eggs, I don't know if it was just the, the yolks. I think it was just the yolks and milk and the coconut and the whole thing and of course rum so mom made coquito and we all tasted it it would have been better without the booze you know the eggs and the coconut and everything else was wonderful I, I love coconut but you put booze in it and that's a traditional drink that people make in puerto rico so mom made the coquito we went to the new year's party and it was it was good you know we are up past midnight, and there was all kinds of food, and, you know, Pop and his wife and Bobby and all these other people were there, and it was a great party. We got sent to go buy some more sodas. King Cole Market. <laughs> it was on Sunset. Lionel. That was Pop's wife's son. Crazy Lionel. We, he, me, Danny, Frank, I don't think Frank went. Pop said, go get some sodas. Walked to King Cole. They were closed. So then we walked over to the Green Circle, I think. And then we're open and we bought sodas and came back. That was kind of far. But we walked and did it and came back to the party. And it was still going. It was wonderful. That was, uh, that was one of the one parties we went to at Pop's house. Then there was a couple of other things. When Bobby got married, then there was a big party. Bobby married Valerie. Valerie was the daughter of Rodney's father. I forgot what Rodney's father's name was. They lived next door. Pop's house was here. Next door right there was um, Rodney's father, Rivera. I forget what his ne father's name was. Rodney's father worked in the movie industry. Sound. He, he was a assistant to the sound people that made movies. A mad, 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 mad world. Whatever sound company did that, uh, Rodney's father was there. And was witness to the guy that died... When that, I think I said this before, it was Sid Caesar in the basement of that hardware store where he messes up the whole hardware store and there's a plat, there's stairs that go to the store and then he's been banging on the door trying to get out and goes like this and hits the part of the stairs and the whole thing collapses. Well, the stunt man that did that died in that, in that stunt. I think, I don't know, but I think when the whole thing collapsed, a two by four went right through his chest. So Rodney's father worked for that company. So Rodney's father thought he was all Mr. Hollywood, you know. And then they lived next door to Pop. So then Rodney and his sister came from New York because Rodney's father already lived in California for a lot of years. So they came from New York and it was Va Valerie. Valerie. I say Valerie like that because Valerie thought she was all this big shit, you know. Valerie kind of ruined uh, Bobby's life because she dumped him. 
after they got married. So, okay, Rodney and Valerie came. Rodney told me that um, one time they were shooting uh, water guns when they were younger, <clears throat> and it was Lionel and Bobby and Valerie and Rodney and shooting water guns. And all of a sudden, the, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, opponents like changed. The teams all of a sudden changed, and it was Bobby and Valerie against Rodney and, and uh, Lionel. So that's how uh, Bobby uh, started uh, going out with Valerie. And Bobby brought Valerie over to our house when we were in uh, on Coronado Terrace. And we got to meet her and stuff. And, and you know, at first it was okay, but then afterwards, nobody liked her. And, you know. um, she called my mother a renegade because my mom didn't hang out with all those other people from Pops and all that stuff. And I don't think she ran it in a bad way, but my mom took it as, what, I'm a renegade? You know, what the hell is wrong with you? So anyway, okay. Bobby married Valerie. And I was there at the wedding. I had my, what, 57 Chevy, and I put flowers on it. I was part of the procession. And uh, Bobby's friends from the army came. They used to call Bobby Ram. Ram, because he was Ramirez, so his, the nickname was Ram. So um, his friends from the army came. And um, I was trying to hang out with them. We lived, Bobby lived in the house. Uh, we were living in Maltman and, and uh, Felmina's house. So the night before the wedding, they had the wedding reception. I don't know, not a reception. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the dinner, whatever. The practice before the wedding, the day before at the church across the street. The Catholic church. So then that night, all the bachelors, they, I don't, they weren't... There was kind of a bachelor party, and I went over there. I snuck out. I wasn't supposed to be there. I went with Chancletas and walked. It was like two blocks away. And I was there for a while and came back, and all these guys were drinking and all this stuff there. They made a big mess. And then the next day was the wedding. So I had my 57 Chevy. I put flowers on it. And bah, 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 uh, from the, you know, after the church and all that stuff. And all these people from New York came. There was other people named Emilio. Every uh, I was at the... Reception and everybody, Emilio, Emilio, Emilio. What they weren't calling Emilio, they were calling these other guys. Their thing was Pop was Emilio, and then he had a son, a big older guy named Emilio, too. So I was hearing Emilio all over the place. So then uh, we, I took Bobby and Valerie in my car to the general hospital because that was right when Danny had his motorcycle and crashed and busted his leg, and Rodney was on the back. Busted his leg, so they were both in the same hospital room. That's a whole other story. But um, I took them after the wedding. We went to the general hospital in East LA, and um, they, when Bobby in his tuxedo and Valerie in her wedding gown, they all went upstairs, you know, and went to visit uh, Rodney and Danny. So then we went back to the party, and it was that. There was a reception at some hall. I don't know where that was. And it was a good thing, you know. It was a good party and all that stuff. So then Bobby was married to Valerie. And they lived right there on Sunset. And I would go visit them all the time. That was Then after that was the time of the dark room and that whole controversy of the dark room. And I would pick up Bobby in the morning and go to Trade Tech because we went to the same school. And um, then... Uh, they moved. They moved to the house over, it was an upstairs house, over toward LACC, but not, it was within walking distance. Within 15 minutes, you could walk to LACC. And that house had been, LACC was the original UCLA, before UCLA, UCLA moved to Westwood. So LACC was UCLA. And the house that Bobby lived in, it was a big two-story house. That used to be some kind of a dorm or something like that. I don't know. It had something to do with students from the, the university. So then Bobby lived upstairs and these other people that owned the whole house lived downstairs. And I remember, you know, Valerie was pissed that we didn't all come and help paint and all this kind of stuff. Well, we were already kind of sick of Valerie, you know. So, all right, they moved in there and they 
lived there for a few years, and then they bought a house in Sunair, Tahunga, way up in the mountains. Tahunga, where Danny was in Sunair, where the original Puerto Rican picnic was up there. I got to talk about the Puerto Rican picnic. So they moved to that house in Sunair in Tahunga, which everybody thought, ooh, this is a wonderful place to live. But all of the smog from L.A. would go up those to those hills. And it'd be smoggy and you could <laughs> get, you know, your lungs could feel it. So they moved to this real nice house. It was a two-car garage and there was no, uh, the garage was on the ground floor and then they lived upstairs. The, the um, house was big enough to have two apartments. At first, the whole thing was, they just lived there, but then they cut off one side and... Um, they rented that to uh, some other people. The family of uh, Valerie's mother was married to this guy. I don't know his name was John. I forget what his name was. But then he had some daughters that moved into that other apartment there. It was a very nice house. But then the, base the basement was two car garage and they had some basement rooms like a dungeon. So from there... Bobby and Valerie started separating. So then Bobby wouldn't sleep upstairs. He had, there was a room downstairs. Had some cot or something right there. And there was a picture of him sitting on the cot. It was a really good picture. They got a great exposure of him out, like all depressed, sitting in the cot, in the basement, in the dungeon by himself. So then, from there is where they got divorced. Yeah. Valerie was cheating on Bobby with Hoovy. Some guy named Hoovy. Okay, and Danny had married Kathy that lived next door to Bobby and Valerie in that house that was near LACC. And um, Kathy had said that Valerie was cheating on Bobby with this guy named Hoovy. And I think I met the guy one time, but there was these other people that they knew and... Um, I wasn't involved too much anymore. So, then Bobby, they got divorced. So then Bobby was working at a school in Glendale, a middle school. Oh, I hear people talking outside. Um, a middle school in Glendale, who was a print shop teacher, which I have some pictures of him there. And Bobby was totally heartbroken that Valerie dumped him. And then for the rest of his life, he, he he never recovered from that. So he was that print te print teacher there for a number of years. And then um, I kind of, I don't know, I think I lost track. I, I was married and doing different things, and I wasn't hanging out with Bobby that much anymore. So um, then he worked at a middle school in Bell Gardens. And it came to pass that I was married to Gloria, and Gloria was the manager of the cable system in Bell Gardens. So then I knew Bobby was at that school. I could have walked from the cable office. It was like maybe three blocks out that way. to her bar. And I had some contact with Bobby. I had him print some business cards for me, but, you know, he had the kids. Uh, it was some terrible business cards. I did some temporary business cards I had him make for me. And the, but then I wasn't hanging out with Bobby at all in those days. Um, and he was, you know, the print shop teacher there for a number of years. And then he passed away while he was working there. I had moved already. I was married to Gloria. We moved to Florida, living in Miami. And I get a call from Dad one day and he said, hey, Bobby died. Bobby had some kind of disease or cancer in his back. That had developed and and ruined his back, and he had he said um, Bobby bent down to pick something up, and his back started hurting like hell. And then he he went to the doctor, and they put him in the hospital, and they did all kinds of tests. And then Pop came one time and said, "What can I do? Go to another doctor? Go to another hospital? You know what's going to happen?" And Bobby says, "I'm dying of cancer. I don't got much longer to live." And Bobby died. Bobby died. Partly of a broken heart from his mom dying when he was a kid. And secondly, a broken heart from Valerie dumping him. 
But um, Bobby used to like to drink a lot and smoke pot and do all kinds of shit, you know. But drink a lot. Drink a whole lot. He tried to outdrink his father because his father was a big drinker. But um, Bobby mostly died from a broken heart. And I was in Florida over here in Miami, and I, I couldn't go to the funeral. They said that all the students from the high school, the, the middle school, all went, ex-students, all the teachers. There was a huge crowd at the, at the uh, funeral, at the grave site. And it's good, because Bobby was a nice guy. He was a popular guy. He was charming and all that, outspoken and everything. But Bobby drank too much. Bobby drank too much and, and partied too much and, and basically drank himself to death. But I loved Bobby, you know. I got into photography mostly from Bobby, too, because he helped out and all that stuff. And, of course, the dark room and all that, you know. And uh, to this day, I <clears throat> I miss Bobby. Too bad he couldn't have, you know, grown older and stuff and, and still been around. But he lived his life. God bless you, Bobby. Rest in peace. Want to cry. <laughs>